Hey, you know, words are hard. Words are very hard. How you doing, YouTube? Uh, Matt Massabeer Reviews, back with yet another review. A little bit of a counterweight brewing here in the form of their ho-ho, hope for the kids. I believe this be a hazy. Uh, it doesn't really tell you what kind of beer it is on here, I don't believe. 6.4%, but it does say on the back here. It says, what do you get when you take no hope for the uh, for the kids, switch up the dry hop and donate the proceeds to charity. So they're talking about a dry hop. I assume this is a dry hop hazy. We're going to dive into it. I believe this came from Steve. Didn't come from Max. I don't think it came from Tyler. I think this is a Steve John. It came from Steve. If not, I'm sorry. I mix it up. I got to start writing names on it. I know I've been saying that for six months. I'm an asshole. Anyway. We are new, we're on New Year's Eve. You're going to see this much after that, but we're on New Year's Eve, so we got a little festivities going on, a little sweater jams over here. Got a little bit of hazy jams over there. Index finger, just above. Infinite cream, and kind of off-white, weird kind of neurotic, crazy bubbles with a pillowy top, a little soapy edges, running the gamut of all those kind of different kind of head vibes. And, like, if you look at that actual body, I think I'm really going to enjoy this beer. You're talking six and change, what, six, two, did I say six, four? It has this haziness, but it also has this kind of clarity to it. It doesn't look too soupy. It doesn't look too thick. Um, it looks like something that's super chuggable, super drinkable. I think I'm going to like this beer. Just based off look, knee jerk, the fact that counterweight beers usually don't suck. I'm on board. Let's get a nose. I mean, it is really just a little citrus leaning um, juice medley. I mean, there's a little bit of soft tropical fruit, like star, you know, like a kiwi vibes. There's a little bit of soft kind of nectarine, kind of peach kind of thing going on there. Um, but it really is citrus leaning and it's grapefruit leaning and it is kind of has this kind of pineapple thing. So it's running the game in the medley, but just a little bit more orange, just a little bit more grapefruit and just a touch of that pineapple in there. Um, just kind of making this beer kind of super chuggable, I think. Because outside of that, not a huge sweetness, not a huge bitterness. It has this kind of weird kind of thinness to the nose, but I don't think it's going to be a thin beer. Again, there's a difference between thin and drinkable, and I think this is going to lean more in that kind of second category. Let's dive in. Cheers. It's exactly what I thought it was going to be, but it lacks that pop, that robust flavoring that I was hoping that would follow suit. There is no dent on this can, so... I don't see one at least. I am drinking this beer on New Year's Day. New Year's Eve, sorry. 2019. So you guys can let me know what the deal is as far as dating goes on this. But um, it just, it, 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 I mean, you're getting that this grassy, cool, grassy, slightly piney kind of bittering. You're getting that citrus lean kind of fruit medley. Um, and, and you're getting that kind of drinkable mouthfeel that I talked about. It's not thin, it's just drinkable. But it just comes off a little bit smaller than what you expect at 6.2%. This is more like a 4% beer for me as far as impact goes. That being said, drinking beer. This is totally a chugger beer. I could throw down a four pack of these in no time. Um, because what it is, is the flavors that it gives you are really well done, tasty. They don't get like too heavy handed. And it's just a tasty beer, man. It's just a tasty beer. You know, very citrus leaning, very slightly pithy. Like I said, a little bit of that green grassiness, a little bit of pineness. Done and done. Yeah, even like a little soft little graininess to the malt bill that kind of adds just a little element to it. So there's multiple levels to it. There's fun taste going on, but lighter, not super hefty. Something you expect more from like a 4 or 5% beer as opposed to 6. But in a, in a very chuggable, tasty package. It's one of the better IPAs I've had as of late. It's still in the conversation. I mean, from a drinkability standpoint, it belongs there because it's made really well and it's giving me a lot of the flavors and impacts that I do enjoy from kind of these non-super hazy New England style IPAs, but just it just lacks just a touch of volume. Just want, I don't want to crank it to 11, just a little, bring it from 6 to 7, 7 and a half. Um, excuse me. And um, let's see, valued availability. Um, I think we get counterweight stuff down here, do we? Am I confusing it with somebody else? We might get a couple drips and drabs of their stuff, but I have no idea of the price point of this beer. Uh, you guys up there in the old New England areas, let me know what's what and leave you with if you like what we like this beer. If you like, um, yeah. East Coast IPAs with a little bit of haze treatment and a drinkability format with a dollop of new school New England. 
that's what this beer is. I mean, chuggable, drinkable, tasty, not super impactful. Something that you can drink, you know, out and about with the friends, tailgating, partying, all that kind of stuff. And I think it's something you could sit and talk about the beer, whether you like it or it could just be a sidecar and something that's long for the ride that gives you a little bit of enjoyment while you're doing other things. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive. If you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully enjoying a little bit of a counterweight right now. And hopefully next time. Cheers. Oh. <sighs>